so today, you will have the opportunity to meet the chief executive officer of the ACT Plus One Group, a global leader in human resource in the human resources industry. The ACT Plus One Group is a multi-billion, with a B, dollar award-winning international powerhouse with multiple divisions that each service unique areas of employment and provide talent management solutions. Our speaker has business experience combined with her passion for education, mentorship, and self-empowerment, which makes her a sought-after lecturer, speaker, and author. Now, we know that in this room, we have an amazing ability to share our talents with one another. So at this time, I'm going to ask you to join me in welcoming to the stage a woman who says one cannot effectively lead without passionately serving. And we know we've been talking about that this weekend. Please join me in welcoming Janice Bryant Howroyd. She's the founder of a corporate empire worth over $3 billion. Act One is one of the largest staffing companies in the United States. She's taken on the corporate world. Now Janice Bryant Howroyd is ready to share her secrets for success. I'm from a small town, Tarver, North Carolina. There are 11 children in our family. Our mom and dad ran the family like a business. Dad was the president and mom was the COO. And I think a lot of what I learned about life and about business, I learned from how my home operated. Dad always taught us, don't look around you to see what your opportunities are. Look inside yourself for them. We really grew up with that. For me, the moment was defining what I would do. And that occurred in Los Angeles. In 1978, Janice parlayed $1,500 and a single phone line. Our first office was actually the front of a rug shop. Into a global staffing and technology empire worth over $3 billion. My first big customer is still one of my best customers. Mama was right. If you treat them right, they stay with you. Named one of Essence Magazine's 50 most inspiring African Americans and Ebony's 100 most influential black Americans, a committed volunteer and mentor who's helped thousands realize their own dreams. In order for mentoring to be effective, it also has to be an equal investment. Mm -hmm. Let's flip over and now let's start to see what you bring to the relationship. She's already a sought after motivational speaker. I want you to applaud yourselves right now. Let's do it, come on. Talk show guest. We have to think of ourselves as entrepreneurs. And an expert on success. I've got a lot of years, 30 years of experience building a business successfully. Those are experiences that people need to hear about, need to know about, and most importantly, they can learn from them. Never once have I changed anybody's life. What I do believe I've done is encouraged, inspired, and shown people how to change their own lives. I will not participate with the naysayers who say it's over for America or it's over for the American worker. What I say is, look at what we've really got working for us and put that to work. Janice is ready to help America find success and balance in their own lives. I just can't wait to help people to understand what my journey is like and more importantly, what their journey can be like. I'm going to break the I'm going to break the barrier this morning and try to do this. No, you know what we taught our children? You never try. As an example, please try to pick that phone up. Yeah, you can't try. 
You either do or you don't in this world. <laughs> and so I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna keep on schedule. One thing that I have to say is that when I sat there and I watched that very old tape, they say at one billion, not out of any form of bragging, but out of acknowledgement of the grace of my Lord Jesus Christ, we are a three billion dollar business. And, and so I sat there and I thought, how do I quickly, within your time frame, share with you the importance of technology and accommodate how technology plays for us. And the quickest, most dynamic way I can do that is to say, I stand before you, a child of God, leading a $3 billion organization founded by myself because I couldn't find a job. I stand here this morning in this capacity because you all stand where you are. You see, when I was foundling my business, I got a visit from a lady you all know and a woman who holds shrine position in my home. I'm not saying this carelessly nor for effect. I'm telling you what the truth is. I came to witness this morning. I'm standing here as the head of a $3 billion company that I founded because Gwen Moore stood where she did in this great state of California. Now, you're going to have to quit with your applause for a minute if I'm going to keep my word and honor the time frame we're working on. So I'm going to ask you to hold it and see if anything else happens for you this morning. Um, Gwen Moore came to visit me. And I, may I? You already started. <laughs> I was like, why is this lady coming to visit me? Now, mind you, at the time Gwen Moore came to visit me on Hawthorne Boulevard in Torrance, California, I'll name it and place it for you. Um, I'm like, why is she visiting me? At the time she visited me, we weren't doing $10 million a year, were we? No. And Gwen went on to give me one of the quickest, most dynamic educations I ever had about why it was important for me to bid for business in the utility space. And she said, you have something they need. Now, I need you to get yourself certified because a lot of times, and y'all know what I mean when I say certified, right? See, because some of y'all come from where I come from, and you know your first certification happens when they take you to the water. <laughs> and, and, and in my church, they move the boards, and they didn't just sprinkle you. They put you all the way under, and you had to have your hair did before you could go out that evening. That's, that that's, was my certification. But Gwen told me about another earthly certification that I needed. And I didn't want to get certified. Thank you very much, uh, Congressman, Congresswoman. I am doing uh, close to $10 million a year. I don't need that certification. And she said, baby, I know you know your business, but let me tell you something. <laughs> and she went on to educate me. I got certified. That opened up different doors for me. Opened up a lot of scrutiny as well. Let's be care let's let's be candid here. You know, when you when you walk around under the cert any certification, whether it's the certification of your faith or the certification of your ethnicity, you know that opens up some scrutiny from some folks. Some folks don't want to know about that. And some folks want to know more about that, but they may not use it to your good. And that is what full circles mean to why I'm here this morning. Number one, because Gwen told me to be here. Number two, because it was right to do so. And to encourage you that as he, and, and, and I bring this encouragement not just from myself, but from Alejandra Castillo, who is the director of the MBDA, right there in Washington, DC. She said, Janice, please, I wish I could be there this morning. And I'm thinking, well, maybe you need to come to some of these other things, and she would do it, Alejandra would do it. But she said, please remind them that the work they do 
is the foundation for everything that you do and other businesses get to do. Now, I'm going to take that a step further because, the, you know, the, uh, what do they say? You don't need to preach to the choir in here. You know what you do, right? You know what you do. So I'm going to bring it full circle and say, I think there are some things that women like Janice Bryant Halvor can do as well. And I had this idea. And please know I'm speaking from my heart right now. That's always a risk in life to speak from your heart if you don't vet it with your head. Okay, so you've been encouraged to follow me on Twitter, J. Bryant Howroy. Don't tweet me yet. Just hear me. Just hear me. How beautiful could it be if we had a Noble Sisters organization totally focused on the idea of funding financially noble women? Now, y'all got a lot of work to do. You've done a lot of work this week. I didn't come in here as a businesswoman to tell you about your business. My, 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 my uh, spiritual mentor, Jay Armstrong, years ago, came over and laid hands on one of the first buildings I bought in Torrance and sitting right there in the capacity of Toyota. And I said, Jay, are you afraid some of those folks from Toyota are going to see you? I'm on camera, so I'm telling the truth here. I said, are you afraid some of those folks are going to see you at Toyota, wondering what you're doing over there? And like when we pray, we old school, we feel it all the way through. And, you know, a couple of people will fall out sometimes. And I never had that moment for myself, but I'm looking forward to it. But, um, and, 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 and I said, you're scared some of those people will see you? And Jake jumped back on me. And he said, get it, get, get it right, sister. I work at Toyota, but I work for the Lord. And he said, when I'm at Toyota, I do Toyota's business. He said, but wherever I am, I do the Lord's business. And he blessed that building. And that's why I said, it's the work you do and the grace of God that I stand before you being able to be here. So how do we continue this journey? Because I'm going to open myself up for one question before I sit down today. It is my belief that when I walk into a room and people honor me with their undivided attention, I need to be thankful for that and I need to be responsible to that. And the best way I found out to do that, how to do that, is to at least take one question. That way, when I walk out, at least one person got an answer they were looking for that morning. <laughs> um, but but I, I, need to, I, I need to tie this in for you. You know I'm in the business of staffing. And most people know us as a personnel company. The growth I'm talking about that Gwen Moore inspired is not about finding great talent and and, and, and having great people and great companies connect, although that is what we do. And we do that out of over 400 offices right here in the United States alone. What, what grew the business was our understanding that technology had to be a friend. When I can't find a friend in a boardroom in an organization, technology becomes my friend. When I can't find a friend in an HR department, technology becomes my friend. When I can't find a friend out of the talent pool that I'm looking for, technology becomes my friend. When I can't find a friend in my lobby waiting to be employed, technology becomes my friend. Because back in the day when I was being in business, we were in that uh, 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 diverse supplier section and 10%, I even remember one company, I won't call their name because they are a client right now and they're doing better, praise God, praise God. But back in the day, 7% out of their total spend would go to diverse companies. And you might have 10 to 20 diverse companies all bidding for 7% of the business and you had to meet the same SLA service level, right? And you had to meet the same pricing. So you miss big, um, I got to be politically correct because I'm in front of political people, right? <laughs> you, you miss big uh, publicly held company. We'll put it that way. And we're bidding on $100 million. Today it's more like $500 million you bid with, with these companies now. And you're going to be a prime. And all of us are going to be subs. <laughs> And you're going to get 93% of the business, and all of us are going to share 7% of the business. And whatever price you bid it at, and whatever service level agreements you make with them, 
we got to meet that pricing and that service level agreement. That's how I build a business. That's the environment I was building it in. I needed something more than just people to help me succeed in that environment. And technology became my enabler. So you understand the idea of technology when I tell you that we develop. I employ right here in the US over 100 people who do nothing but design technology. My company is the only company through our Agile One solutions that has homegrown design technology to service clients. Everybody else is buying it off the shelf and adapting it, okay? We design technology to become more efficient. My brother Carlton, who you know well, Gwen, we design technology to become, as a matter of fact, Carlton's wife, Ruby, is sitting in here with me today. Because um, we're not scared, we're, we're not a scared to high family either. Okay? People say black families don't work. Let me tell you, I grew up knowing black families work. I'm going off, 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 off agenda a little bit right here. But it's all about how technology plays. I know black families work because I'm one of 11 children, same mom, same dad, everybody got a college ed education, everybody takes care of the family. So black families work, okay? And I got black family members in my company. My sister Trish sitting over there is a North Carolina A&T State University uh, engineering graduate. You know, so, 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 so black families work. But how does that tie into this discussion of technology? I knew what I do and I did what I did. But when my sister, my sister-in-law, my brother joined my company, they brought to me a different level of how I could do my business. They taught me how to implant technology in my business. My sister was the center of STEM before STEM was a word in your mouth, okay? Now, here, so you get the idea of how technology and designing solutions helped me grow my business and why it's so important to me that I be a part of supporting what you do because I also said I didn't get the opportunity to do that. I didn't know the door was there, let alone opening it, until Gwen told me, here's a door you can walk through. Then I had family who said, before you walk through that door, walk ready and have technology, because you are not going to be able to compete, let alone survive or thrive in that hostile environment of 7% of 100 shared by 20 against one. Okay, so we design technology. I wanna talk to you about another thought around technology. T, talent. As elected legislative officials, we gotta make sure that people don't end up like me finding out later that technology is their answer. We got to make sure that the children and the grandchildren of all of us in here grow up understanding technology is more than an iPad or a game. We got we to gotta make sure we're doing work at, at the level you do to ensure that they are getting the education. When I say talent, I'm not talking people. I'm talking people empowered by education. That's what talent is in this competitive world. 10 years ago, companies were grown, uh, are born global. Today, jobs are born global. No need apply if you don't speak a second language, if you don't have this skill set, if you don't have the ability to grow across geographies, not just from a desk. That's what our babies are competing in. That's the world they are. Look at me. I'm telling you honestly, honestly, I service over 13,000 clients. I'm telling you my truth. Our babies, your children, your grandchildren, and if all y'all don't hold your job, some of y'all <laughs> are competing in that environment. Okay? I know because I've hired some of you when you've left office. Okay, just to make sure we keep you relevant so you can run again. Um, that's T in technology. E is empowerment. Empowerment does not happen with simply education. Empowerment happens because wisdom occurs. And the simplest, best definition I've learned of wisdom is that wisdom 
is experience married to knowledge. What we know and what you do has to be married. That's why I thought of Noble Sisters. We can be smart about your business. We can be smart about my business. But how wise can we be if I use the strength of my business to financially support that you get to use the education and the access of your business? Empowerment, T-E, talent empowerment. C, community. Y'all might be a lot younger than I am, but people who are my age remember the day when black folks started everything and we were so busy starting it in political activity that we kept leading and the folks following us were picking up the benefit. This is not a conversation about division. This is a conversation about community. Let's not be afraid to speak boldly for our community. Let's not be afraid. It, there is nothing wrong with walking in. Well, I'm not like Joseph this morning in a coat of many colors, but I'm honoring you in your theme colors, right? Let's not be afraid to walk boldly robed in the cloak of our need, our community. How do you get to walk boldly for your community? It's easy to go back to where you were elected from and preach to the choir. But you can't walk boldly for us unless we are doing things that you can point to. So we have to be providing talented individuals who are empowered with wisdom in order for you to build a community. TEC. This is the last one is the H. Everybody got the ology. Okay? <laughs> hear, me, hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me. H. T E C H. H. Healthy habits and happy hearts. We've got to have healthy communities. I'm not just talking about getting out in the morning and running. Some of us live in communities right in this room. We can't get out and run in the morning. And I ain't talking about because of the thugs who didn't go home yet. I'm also talking about because those thugs in cars who are going to ask you what you're running for. I ain't here to hurt nobody. I'm here to help somebody. Okay? Because there are some communities where folks who work for me can't run. They not safe. But I'll tell you. I have at least one house in one community where I can't run because I ain't safe. You see what I'm saying? So it's not just about the athleticism of our health, although I do work out. It's also about making sure that people are putting healthy foods in, uh, into our community and not giving us weak old food and charging us research level prices. And you can't be healthy if your heart is not healthy. And I'm not just talking about heart disease, although I live in a family where heart disease is prevalent amongst our men. It's personal to me. I'm talking about healthy habits and happy hearts. If a heart is not happy, it is not healthy. A happy heart can look at a bad situation and find light through it. A happy heart can look at difficult circumstances and find strength from it. And the collective energy of millions of happy hearts through the years that have shed bitter tears can live to see a week as we just experienced where the Supreme Court of the greatest nation in the world does more work in one week than they've done in the last hundred years. And those happy hearts don't get to experience that health 
unless you have the ability to do what you do. And I'm not talking personal ability, personal ability. I'm talking about collective ability. And that, ladies and gentlemen, sisters and brothers, is why my heart was healthy and happy when Gwen Moore asked me to come talk with you and impress upon you how technology has been important to my business and to the solution of our communities. When we work, we don't hurt. Or as somebody else says, hurting people hurt people. Being healthy people must ensure that people are healthy and healthy communities build healthy countries and healthy countries create a healthy world and a healthy world welcomes our babies who have not yet been born. I open myself for at least one question, then I'm going to get out of your way and let you do what you do, because you know what I do. I'll take one question. Yes, ma'am, from Maryland. I believe, thank you for that question. Everybody heard her question? Recommend, what would my recommendation be? And you heard me preamble my conversation about I'm from the South. And Southern women, y'all, I ain't giving them our secrets away, but I'm gonna just say something people might have seen that we can let them know we acknowledge about ourselves. We know we walk in and sometimes we talk with a little soft voice, but we carry some very hard and strong messages. And so I'm gonna answer you in that spirit. Not that I, I propose I could tell you what to do. I do believe in driving in your own lane. Um, <laughs> but um, as a business person, I believe that if you had a very active community room as noble women, you could invite conversation, which inspires communication across your platforms that would lift you up. Let me tell y'all something about tweeting. Uh, you get, got invited to follow me on Twitter at J. Bryant Howard. I've done it three times, Trish. I did my job. Um, <laughs> let me tell you what happened. I spoke at the Chattanooga Chamber of Commerce on, I forget what day it was, but I'm in the middle of a lot of travel, okay? And before somebody tweeted things that I was saying, and People call them Janisms in my company, right? Janisisms. And I'm like, I ain't that old that you start quoting me like your grandmama, right? Like I'm big mama already, right? And I ain't gonna be big mama because my children ain't got no big spouses. Uh, but, 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 uh, 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 but when they do, I'm praying, I'm praying on it. Y'all pray for me, I pray for you. But, but I, I, I spoke at this chamber event Lord be my witness. Now I go there through Jesus Christ. I don't care how you go there. I just say, no matter who you call God, call it God every day, then shut up and listen. I'm gonna do that shortly. Um, I spoke at this chamber. Before I got back to the hotel, I said I spoke in Chattanooga, which meant it didn't take me a long time. It wasn't like driving LA traffic, right? No hate on Chattanooga. They're doing wonderful things there. But um, they still got some flags and things in the state, but. <laughs> But then, again, many of us do, right? Ain't nobody got no fingers to point at nobody on that. Um, whether it's a flag flying or it's a flag in here. You know, some of these, okay. But before I could get back to the hotel, you shaking your head. Before I could get back, to, you ask me, don't ask me. Don't ask me, okay. Before I could get back to the hotel, I had three invitations, paid invitations to speak because people were tweeting what I was saying and somebody said, oh, we got, she, she, she spoke to our theme. Let's invite her to speak or so and so and so. And I'm thinking, I'm in the business of technologically supported talent. 
I'm going to end up making more money talking than I am walking. You see what I'm saying? And, but it happened. It happened because people were communicating it out. And now you think about it. I ain't going to tell y'all my speaking fee because I do it for love here. But, uh, <laughs> but, 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 uh, but, but everybody you talk to, you ain't in love with. And so they pay a little bit, right? Y'all keep yourself straight. Keep yourself straight. Y'all had a good conference. Stay straight. But let me just say this. For business owners such as you and me, we know how long it takes one of our offices to bring in a $100,000 net profit. I got more than that from one speech that people tweeted less than 20 minutes of my work. You get what I'm saying? So when you ask me what you can do as an organization, as a business person, I hate to throw the numbers on it for you, but you know numbers work. And you know you got to understand the wisdom and power of technology to empower your organization. Your whole panel, if I ever shut up, are gonna be on the idea of technology, right? Use technology yourself. Create a community online. Open the questions up you have, whether it's district by district, state by state, or issue by issue. Invite your community to speak to it. When your community grows that way online, people are going to hear you differently and respect you differently when you're standing in the halls of Congress or wherever you're going to do your work, and your folks back home are going to support you differently because they see the effort you're making. And here's the big win. All the young people who today may vote as an event will begin to vote as a culture. You get what I'm saying? Right now, we vote as an event. Something happened, we show up, we go vote on it. Something didn't happen, we show up, we go vote on it. Somebody run who looked like us, talked like us, walked like us, we go vote on it. It's kind of like Christians who show up at Christmas and Easter at church. You see what I'm saying? But when we open up this community, and now we've got this big following in our community, people think differently about what we do. More people paid attention to the fact that Bruce became Caitlin than that Bruce ran over somebody because the power of communication. And I ain't hating on Bruce, don't hate Caitlin. I ain't hating, I ain't hating. I'm not hating, but when people can go online and have a voice that they believe you're listening to, and, 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 and when p other people see, people are interested in you as a group of women around collective thoughts and issues, they get with it. Let's be honest about this. I'm going to close this off. Let's be honest about this. The work that African Americans have done in the United States of America has benefited every group of people from poll to poll. I ain't talking about just the election poll. I'm talking about from the north to the south pole, the total hemisphere. I'm talking about the good earth that God created. We have benefited everybody. And we are still legitimately marching, singing, we shall overcome. Come on over. We shall overcome. No, come on over. I love a good song as much as anybody. I heard the president try to sing too. Uh, but, but we need to use the power of technology to advance the goodness of the human spirit. Because everything that we've stood behind politically has been a benefit to the collective body. Anybody know an amen in here? Amen. And, 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 and so my, my thought on that would be we got to get online to get people in line, okay? Open your own community, and it don't cost hardly anything. Some of y'all got children who could donate it for you, and if they are working people, they can take it off of their taxes. You see what I'm saying? They could donate the development of your chat room, of your community. 
and, t and, and, and then take it off of their taxes to do it, it's, it would benefit the whole group. You see what I'm saying? And, and, and that would be very powerful for you. You have to have discipline around that. Listen, I'm going to shut up and sit down. I just want to say one thing to you. It, 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 it's something that sustained me when my oldest sister went away to college. And I mentioned I'm one of 11 children. But when my oldest sister, Sandy, who is responsible for me coming out to California, when she went to college, I felt like the house got empty. You ever love somebody that way? That you in the midst of a whole, and we didn't live in a huge house. We had high ceilings, but not that many rooms. <laughs> and there were 11 of us, mom and dad, and anybody else who came by who needed somewhere to stay. Because my mama said, if you got more than you need, you got more than enough. And my sister left, and it felt empty. It created a hole in my heart. And I shared that with her by letter, because we didn't have email and Twitter. And you know, I remember when I started my company, when I first got a fax, I thought the world was, you know, I felt like Judy Jetson. Some of y'all old enough to know who she was. Um, but, but my sister wrote me back. And it's a poem that, I think they say unknown poet, when you look it up. But it, it, she wrote this to me. My love is of a birth as rare as all far objects strange and high. Twas begotten by despair upon impossibility. Magnanimous despair alone could show me so divine a thing where feeble hope could ne'er have flown, yet vainly flapped its tinseled wings. Therefore, the love with us doth bind. And fate so enviously debars is the conjunction of our minds in cooperation with the stars. God bless you. Thank you.